Welcome to our File Hubble Drive Time. In a first video about motor control, I explained the general concept of tuning, but now I think it's time to actually do this. And I'm going to use the setup here. Here I'm having a MC5005, the CO version, so can open, and a BX4 motor 3242 having linear hall sensors. That's more or less the same setup that I used in the first video about simple configuration, but using bigger components here because then it's easier to be seen in the video. And then there's a second motor here in the setup that I'm going to use in one of the next videos to show you how to deal with disturbances. Here in this case, the motor is already configured and I can directly start uh, doing the identification. We'll keep it simple here. So it's a, a small disk that I'm going to use as a load for the motor. And the first step is uh, identifying inertia and then I can show how to tune. And therefore I'm going to switch to the motion manager. So let's do this. So here is the view within the motion manager. You can see the motor is already configured and I can directly start with identification of inertia and that's using the configure controller tool here. There are two ways. We could either enter the value manually or we try identification. In many cases, identification should work. If it doesn't work for you, please enter a rough estimate of the inertia manually because this is an important parameter for a preset of the complete control loop speed and position loop. Otherwise, you might have a hard time to find a stable uh, control. So start with identification. We could even move the motor in the middle of the possible range here, uh, but that's not necessary here with the free running disk. And then run the startup method. So we got some steps which are applied to the motor here and it's moving. And uh, next page is the summary. So here is the inertia of the motor and that's what has been identified for the disk and that's reasonable. It's a pretty small disk compared to the motor, but that's sufficient here for the general approach. We get a summary of all the parameters and download them to the driver and are finished here. I could save, but I don't need to save. Tuning then is done using the controller tuning window. That's a complete set of tools here where the biggest part here is now empty. But that's where we're going to see the uh, actual position and actual speed and so on. On the left side here is the targets and down here are the parameters that we can change in that case. We are starting with the velocity loop because as I mentioned, the, we don't have to deal with the current loop because these parameters are known by selecting the correct motor. Usually such a step in tuning the speed loop should be somewhere in the middle range of what the motor is capable. This one would be capable of moving up to 4,500 RPM at nominal conditions. Uh, but I selected a value of only 1,000 RPM here for ease of interpretation. Let's do a first step here. And what we see is the green line is uh, the target speed and the red line is the actual speed and that's more or less like out of a textbook for this uh, symmetric optimum of a speed loop where you got an overshoot of roughly 40% when applying a single step. And then afterwards it's stable so it's really uh, coming into the corridor but it takes some time. I could directly check the position control and do a single step here. That's a single turn of the motor, the 4096 increments, if you want to have a different, uh, change the value here. So one step. Well, the green line again is the demand position. The, so this is where the profile generator expected us to be, where the red line is the actual position. So it's pretty slow and there's a big difference in between, but it's generally stable. Now we could tune, starting with the speed loop and tuning is increasing the gain down here. And typically a value of two should be possible with such a low inertia, but you might hear it in the uh, audio of this video, it's getting a little noisy. So if I increase it more here, then it's definitely unstable. So don't do this. 
don't overdo uh, the increase of the gain. And uh, then of course, when I do this step again, that's what our application node explains, one overshoot, one undershoot, and then we are in the corridor. We can now switch to the position loop and try again this same single turn of the motor and didn't change much. Uh, I can of course now increase the gain for the position loop too and try again. And we are closer, but if I overdo that one here, it's rather getting instable than following perfectly because there's always this following error between the green line and the red line. Rather than overdoing the control gains here, it's better to actually use the capabilities of the profile generator by applying the pre-calculated speed and pre-calculated torque, so these feed forward controls here. And um, because the profile generator already knows what torque and what speed we would need. And so let's do this again. Even without a too high position loop gain, I now get perfect following. Maybe we should check with the uh, actual current that we are having here. So the torque and current are the same value here. That's the uh, dotted blue line here. And on the right side, you see the scale here, a value of 1000 equals the nominal current of the motor. And for a servo drive like here, we preset a maximum of 3000. So a maximum of three times the nominal current can be used for acceleration deceleration. And we reach about 2800 which is very close to the maximum. So the suggestion here is to reduce the profile parameters a little bit uh, in order to have more headroom for dealing with disturbances, which we are going to see in one of the next videos, of course. So uh, these are changed. One more step here, following perfectly, but now the peak here is in the range of 2300, so enough headroom to compensate whatever uh, deviation or uh, disturbing torque you might have. I can even check with the analysis page and uh, analyze how fast we have been and how much overshoot we had. But now I could usually start um, by, well, first step might be to actually transfer these parameters and maybe save them in the driver, but uh, then connect it to whatever master you're going to use and uh, really st start working in your application. Of course, we could now uh, once again step back to the uh, drive functions window and configure limit switches or whatever analog reference you want to have, but that's a different story. So what we did here was tuning the gains first of the speed loop and then the position loop with in between activating the feed forwards to get perfect following. Please be aware the local profile generator is active in profile position mode or profile velocity mode only. If your master uses one of the cyclic modes, make sure the appropriate profile parameters, so the values down here, are really set in your NC kernel in your application too. So far, the general concept of tuning and the workflow, basically it's always the same. And we'll see this in the next video where I'm going to use a big disk, big at least compared to our motor here. And uh, then I'll explain how to deal with such a big inertia. That's where our braking chopper is going to be used and I have to explain the concept of the braking chopper then. So far for now. And if you've got any questions in between, of course, feel free to contact our local sales team or our MC support team. And of course, you can as well leave a comment below the video here. Thanks for watching and uh, check back with our channel. Bye.